All right. Good evening, everybody. It's Wednesday night. No, Thursday night. Sorry. It is seven o'clock. It's time for another Conversations with Cougars. And I have Dr. Mark Kingry, one of the OGs of the Northview program from back in the day. Good evening, Mark. How are you doing, bud? Doing well. Doing well. Good to be here. Oh, it's so good to, to, to see you. It's been too many years since we've seen each other. But for those of you who don't know Mark, and I suspect we're going to have a whole bunch of your former teammates rolling through very, very soon, Mark. Yeah. Mark came in in the second freshman class in Northview history, the fall of 79, graduated in 83. He was on the historic 81 championship team as a junior. He was a center. 5'9", 170 pounds, soaking wet, killing it with the wishbone and all that great stuff. But we're going to get back. And as I like to do first, Mark, I want you to share a little bit about the current version of Mark Kingry, his family, and your practice and everything else. And then we'll jump back in the time machine. So please, let's hear from you. All right. Current version of Mark Kingry. I'm not 5'9", 170 anymore. I'm about 5'8", and 190 maybe um but um you know i've been in the orthodontic practice in montgomery now for a little over 28 years um practice by myself and um we have been married to beth for 32 years uh, we have three wonderful daughters um one of them married and um actually have our first grandchild on the way in january awesome. so that's awesome. that's the exciting news of our family um, but went to Huntington College for undergrad, went to UAB for dental school, went to LSU for, um, for residency and spent two years in New Orleans and all, but with all of that, I'm an Auburn Tiger at heart. So. Of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> were you may, were you a little conflicted when they recently, the two teams recently played or you're in Auburn through and through? No, not conflicted at all. <laughs> I had season tickets since I was about 10 years old to Auburn. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, well, guys, Mark was, again, a part of the second freshman class, the fall of 79, when the school is just getting started. But, Mark, let's back up even before you come into high school with your parents being educators and so many of us being taught by your mom in, in elementary school. What, well, I guess, what was it like growing up in the house of educators in Dothan and and were, before you knew you were going to Northview, was Dothan the likely path where you were headed? Um, yeah, to some degree. First of all, thank the Lord I was not ever in my mother's uh, classroom because I probably would not have survived. And, and actually, I was in none of my parents' um, either schools at all at, either, at, at any time. Um, but I grew up right on the line between Dothan and Northview. And so when I, when I grew up, it, it, we just, on Friday nights, we went to the Dothan High football games. And um, I, I remember my big sort of coup was I got a Stedman Sheely tearaway jersey one, one Friday night. And, I mean, you know, I, I wore that in the neighborhood for, for, for years kind of thing. Um, but when, when Northview came out, I, literally I was five houses, five or six houses from the line. Uh, the line went down Fortner Street and we lived in Stonebridge. And so I was just right there. Um, I sort of got caught up in the, the moving around of everything. I, I spent um, the first four years at Heard Elementary. Then I went to Montana Street for two years. Then I got to go to Young Junior for its last year for one year. Then I went to Honeysuckle for one year, and then I went to Northview. So I basically didn't move houses, and I went to like four or five schools in six, and this was being pieced around uh, all of Dothan. So, wow, I didn't crazy. realize that in the yeah. mid seventies that the either the not the dynamics, but the districts or however they figured mm -hmm. out where you went to school changed so often well with yep. all of those changes was there junior high or middle school I'm not sure what it was called at your time was there middle school junior high sports within the the city well there were there were both um, my my seventh grade year at um, young junior there were junior high sports going on um, there wasn't seventh grade football at the time you were still in the city leagues um, and I played for the bombers 
Um, I was uh, one of the Mendham kids, so to speak, um, a, a, along that way that um, all the brothers that coached along through there. Um, that was good guy. I, yeah, yeah, we were, it was, that, was, that was something else. Yeah. Um, and so we, um, and then in eighth grade began middle school and, and middle schools didn't have sports at the time. And so again, we stayed with the city continued actually extended for that, that eighth grade um, and then started uh, freshman ninth grade football at Northview. And when did you first meet either Coach Kirkland or Coach Parrish or any of the your future coaches? Yeah, at, uh, ninth ninth grade um, at uh, at Northview. Well, but but you know it's funny. I um, my dad had known Coach Kirkland for years and years and years. So uh, when I started to to head that way, my dad had taught at Chipola Junior High Junior College in Mariana way back in the day, and then. Um, through Wallace uh, College and whatnot. So dad had known him for a long time. But yeah, it was ninth grade when I got to Northview. So I didn't have any of the, I wasn't a part of that junior, that uh, Gerard junior high group that knew a lot of the coaches that ended up transitioning. And, and who were some of your buddies at Herd and Honeysuckle who ended up coming to Northview with your class? Remember, a, a lot of my class ended up at, um, uh, Dothan High School. Uh, a lot of honeysuckle ended up that way, but um, I know Scott Lambert. Um, I'm pretty sure Charles Bronson. Um, trying to remember who else ended up out of honeysuckle at Northview. There weren't that many of us. Um, matter of fact, that was one of the sort of challenging transitions that I had was that a lot of my friends ended up. Uh, um, across the way, and then the the people that I was friends with, Damian Vesey and Jeff Groover and Richard Fox and a bunch mm -hmm. of that crowd, never actually played football. Uh, yeah. They did other sports or other things, and so um, my football crew that you know we really um, I gelled with them starting in ninth grade and, and then on through. Uh, Mark, I want to welcome. We got a few people who are, are watching, including Shirley C, who says to sell you hello. Oh. Okay. It, you look so okay. much like your dad with whom she worked with for many, many years. Yes. He, uh, he finished his career as the, uh, vice, one of the vice principals at Northview. And again, thankfully that was with my brothers. Um, I believe Bryant may have gotten a little bit of him and then Kevin in there in the early nineties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you could never escape a Kingry when it came to Dothan education during that time period. There you go. <laughs> well, Mark, what, when you were, when you came over to Northview and, and you were transitioning, was football going to be the sport for you? Did you have any other sports you wanted to try? Did you play any other Northview sports? Uh, well, baseball and um, I'd played baseball from T-ball all the way through at Doug T pretty much most of the time. Um, and had played football again uh, with the Bombers pretty much. And well, I actually started it at way, going way back to um, the Boys and Girls Clubs is where I started playing football in, in second grade. Um, but yeah, football, I, I quickly realized I couldn't hit a curveball. And so while I enjoyed being a catcher and I enjoyed um, having my hands on, uh, you know, in the, in the mix at all times uh, with baseball, I also realized that, well, with football, I may not get to carry the ball, but by golly, I can touch the ball on every single offensive play. So, yeah. you know, that, that was that was fun for me. To at least at least I could say that. So, uh, so yeah, I quickly I transitioned. Gonna, that's what I was going to ask you, how you weren't the, the largest in stature on the team by, 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 by far, but how did you end up in the center, literally playing in the middle of the line? because I was too slow to play anything else. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, I got stuck there in seventh, eighth grade ball, um, somewhere in there. Um, I ended up with the red X or whatever on your forehead. Um, I, I went over the 135 pound limit and ballooned up in there um, in eighth grade and the Mendham stuck me at center and I really didn't know what else to do. So when I came to Northview, uh, I was an offensive lineman, and that's where I stayed. Even though I begged Coach Hicks 
once I was playing JV, I begged him and begged him. He finally put me in one game in the JV game as, as a linebacker because I just wanted to play something else. So, but that was, that was the extent of it. Um, and as a ninth grader, did you guys start practicing a little bit earlier before school actually started or did that start? Or do you recall? Cause here's where, I, here's where I'm going with this is when, yeah. when did you meet Dickie Lillard for the first time? Had to have been um, in practice, I guess. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not – I'd have to go back and look to make absolute sure. I'm pretty sure Dickie and I play – I think he play. <laughs> he, he hates to say this. It's been too long. And Dickie would probably kill me. You know, he'd like, well, yeah, I played. Um, I, I, I'm, I know that David Alford David, – David lived um, one street over from me. And so David was on the Bombers at one time. I'm not sure if Dickie did, but he and I – may have met in ninth grade but we i believe we knew each other before that through sports in some form or another well it's it's not hard athletes are going to find athletes in the city uh, of dothan it's not that that big but i was just curious because i know you guys uh were both juniors on that 81 team yeah. and we're going to get to that in a few minutes because i think a lot of things that's not really uh, mentioned very often are the contributions from the junior class to that 81 team very very important but as a ninth grader I assume Dickie was on that team and so many of your future yep. varsity teammates oh yeah and I know coach Kirkland coached that team maybe coach Tribb I'm not sure yep. who else would have been the coaches yep. back then uh, that was pretty much uh the, the two of them pretty much handled ninth grade at the time and were you one of the rare exceptions who truly loved practicing down in the Dust Bowl I hated it. I mean, that was just terrible. <laughs> and and it, and and truly, I mean, it was even more dusty. I mean, the, the school had only been there for two years or whatever at that point. And I mean, it it was rough. I mean, there was nothing to that practice, that baseball practice field. And I mean, it was it was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we we don't have to relive those those <laughs> terrible memories, but. I can say I was a few years, obviously, behind you. I was class of 86. You were a senior my uh, freshman year. And I specifically remember memorizing and knowing who all the seniors were yeah. from that year. Because, one, you guys were state champions. And, two, I walked around in fear that somebody might recognize me or my ninth grade teammates. And if we didn't know your name, we always had the thoughts that there was going to be hell to pay somehow. We oh, that's were thrown in the creek. We were going to be made to run extra the hill or something. Yeah. So I had memorized from the, one of the Northview programs it, without mm -hmm. looking at their numbers. I knew everybody's yeah. face and name recognition because I knew I wasn't going to be the guy who was going to get caught. So, oh, yes. I, well, I, and, and <laughs> I was the same way, you know, and, and, and in my world, uh, it, at that time, there were only so many players, and a lot of them had come from Dothan High, but a lot of them had sort of bubbled up through the system. And so, and and I was being at, at Honeysuckle, a lot of them had come out of Gerard. I really didn't know a lot of those guys either. And so, yeah, I sort of felt the same way. I was like, okay, I, I better I better figure out who they are. You know, the Mike Durden's the world and the uh, Mike Mathis's and the, and the people that, you know, I was sort of thrown into with there in ninth and 10th uh, grade well I was going to say you did you also have the Carmichael boys to have to yep. to deal with the oh, yes. practice as well yes yes that was <laughs> that was real fun try to try to pull that off yeah yeah not, I, not I, good. Don't, I, I don't see any uh, seriousness in your face when you say how fun that was <laughs> no. but guys I'm talking with Dr. Mark Kingry he's in Montgomery he was uh, in Northview's second freshman class class he came in in 79, class of 83, but he was an 81 state champion. And we hadn't quite gotten to that season yet. But, Mark, I want to talk about academics. Clearly, they, they were important to your family, with your parents being educators. I know that at least my experience with your mom teaching me in fifth grade, she was pretty no-nonsense. So I can only imagine inside the house how serious education was. So share a little bit about that focus because a lot of times, even back in the 80s when we were growing up, 70s and 80s, Academics and athletics sometimes didn't always intertwine as, as well as they should have. Well, there was uh, there was a high standard, uh, you know, and and it probably some of that was good and some of it was bad, to be honest. Um, I, I probably ended up um, pushing myself uh, pretty hard on a lot of that. 
um, I, I'm the oldest of three boys, so I was sort of the type A driven kind of a, a person. But mother and daddy would always check up on me. We, we moved recently, and um, it, it was funny. My, we found all my old report cards, and, and in about third grade, my mom wrote a note back to my teacher, and I had made a B. And, uh, you know, that, this third grade, you know, I thought that was pretty good. And she wrote a, a note back to the teacher, which basically just ripped me apart and said that I could do better and that if, if there if, – if she needed any help to please let my mom know because she would she would see to it that, that I did what I needed to do. So so yeah, there was there was a little bit of you you made sure that you colored between the lines, that's for uh -huh. sure. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, Coach Jerry Andrews says to tell you hello. He says All right. Hey Coach. Great family and true cougars. Uh, absolutely, Coach. Hope you're doing well down in down in your office at the beach. I feel real sorry for you. <laughs> oh yeah, really. Rough life he lives, I can tell. Hey, I, I, we all I hope there's an extra spare bedroom for all of us coach to come hang out sometime. Mark, let's uh let's talk about some of the classes. I know there's so many awesome teachers and classes. Uh, that were taught over there, but do you have any fond memories? I know that you don't have to list all the teachers and I know you don't want to leave anybody out, but there's got to be certain classes that really just were some of your favorites. Um, well, I, and, and I don't think it was my favorite, but the teacher that I feel the most sorry for, um, maybe I should apologize to Ms. Jernigan um, because I had her twice for math and um, I was not the best math student. And unfortunately, too many times I brought my friends into math class. And um, I, so when I didn't do so well, I, I probably didn't handle myself in the best way. Sometimes I'd get a little frustrated and mm -hmm. stomp and snort and hit the desk and do some things that probably weren't real pleasant. So I, I, it's probably more I need to apologize to Ms. Jernigan because I remember that um, she were. Um, coaxed me through math and got me there and then I ended up as a math minor in college of all things so you hey, know something still, changed. something yeah. must have clicked with you well <laughs> I don't know if you saw in our Northview uh, Facebook group thread recently but Revis Gertman who is the um, superintendent now up in Ozark recently right. visited with Miss Jernigan and posted a great picture of the two of them yes I did see that I did see that yeah. picture yes Yes, and, uh, I also had the opportunity to coach her son in um, Little League Baseball one time, and that was that was a fun experience, and she couldn't figure out how I could be so patient with him, but so frustrated with myself at times, and so uh, that, that was fun experience, fun, fun times. That is fun, and Charles Bronson says, what's up, Gil? Uh, yeah. yeah, there you go. Hi, Charles. Yeah, I'm talking with number 54. Mark Kingry, we're just talking about some good old times. You know, it's a new school. Northview just came up because Dothan had just outgrown itself. I think at the time that they decided to make the split, Dothan High may have been either the first or second largest school in the state. Large, yeah. And it was gigantic in the 70s <laughs> under Stedman's helm. They went to the state title game two years in a row. Yep. I think it was in 78 that Bubba went, uh, won the state championship uh, in baseball. Mm -hmm. So the North, excuse me, the Dothan High base uh, sports programs in the 70s were as good as they got in around the state. But now we have a brand new school. Now it's, it's just all different colors, different side of town. Well, I, I, I wish I would have been a few years older to kind of see or feel how that was when you have true friendships buddies, girlfriends, whoever it was from junior high, they're now across town and they're the rival. Yeah. What was that like for you? Because I know that the friendships probably never went away, but now rivalries began. Yeah. Friendships, the friendships never went away and I stayed close and, and yeah, I, I went to dances at Dothan High with different girls and I'd, I'd do stuff with friends that grew up playing baseball and, and football with and that kind of thing. But it, it was unique and, and, it, it it happened immediately. I mean, it's so it's so weird. It, it it was all of a sudden. Nope, you're Northview and you're Dothan High. I mean, it, it was not a gradual. You had to get used to being a Northview Cougar. You 
you were a Northview Cougar day one, and that's what you were, and and you just accepted that, and and it became the identity for everybody that was there, and the the rivalry sprang up very quickly. Um, you know, it was it was when when I would see people out and we talk football. I mean, it, it was it was obviously very quickly. So that's against y'all, and that's great. We can be, be friends during the during the week or during the rest of the month, see each other at the fair or whatever the case may be. But, mm -mm, you know. You know, growing up wearing the black and red as a child, that's all you knew. Stedman's jersey being a great yeah. example. Yeah. Do you remember your first piece of Northview clothing, shirt, jersey, jacket, anything that said Northview on it? Um, I mean, I guess my – my football jacket with my football number on it. Um, although I, the, the thing that probably goes back the oldest, that probably wasn't until 10th grade uh, on that picture that I shared, I actually found my, my baseball sleeves from my ninth grade year. So I, I Northview baseball on it. Um, that may have been one of the first things, although that would have been in the spring. So I'm sure I had football stuff from the fall, but yeah, um, it was pretty exciting to be a Northview Cougar finally. And and how cool was it to get that varsity letterman's jacket? Oh man, that was that was awesome. I I still have it around here, and my kids have worn it to school for various things through the years and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's it's pretty wild. It could be eighty five degrees at the peanut <laughs> festival, but gosh, you're gonna wear that jacket. I got you. Got to wear that thing. <laughs> I can vividly remember me or or somebody, you know, people. It's it's in the eighties, and you're gonna yes. wear, you're gonna show out who you are and your school. You're somewhere with me. Yeah, I've got a picture of me somewhere wearing it, and it's pushed up over my my. I mean, because I'm burning up, but by golly, I'm gonna wear it. That's right. That's so awesome, guys. I'm talking with Mark Kingry, and we're just talking about some goofy old days. But Paul Morrison says to tell you hello oh it's been hey. a long time yeah it's been has been a long time all right let's talk about the clubhouse let's talk about the locker room okay let's talk about just guys being guys and, and you can tell stories that you want to tell statute of limitations is almost expired on most of the <laughs> thing but there's characters in every team in every right. locker room in every clubhouse do you remember any uh rituals do you remember anything about well, the seniors had their lockers over here or the, you know, how every, the, every team takes on its own persona. Oh, and yeah. You had the, the class, your freshman year was 79, but there was a class before you of freshmen. Right. It's a mix of Dothan High student athletes and brand right. new Northview ones. But do you remember any of those days, any of those dynamics? Well, I just remember how intimidated I was as a ninth grader. Um, you know, you You'd ease in and hope that the varsity had already gotten ready and dressed and they were headed out to practice or whatever because you just didn't want to run into any of them. I mean, I, I was scared speechless. I mean, I it just I, I didn't know what to do, you know, and you're, you're carrying around this little bag and you obviously feel like a, a ninth grader. And, and even when you get to 10th grade, you know, I mean, you're just like, uh, I don't. I got to go out there and hit these guys. And, and, and then they start taking their shirts off after, you know, and they're switching and you're going, Oh my gosh, you know, I, I'm not sure I have a hair on my chest yet. You know, I mean, <laughs> like, Oh, yeah. this is going, this is going in bad. Um, you know, so it, it was fun. Um, I don't remember specific, anything specific in the locker room probably other than it once once you get to junior, senior, it, it's just the place you hang out and you talk and you laugh and you um, do those things. So, I mean, I, thankfully, I don't have any negative memories of locker rooms like maybe some folks do. Memories that was um, a, a horrible time in terms of people talking bad about other people or ganging up on other people or anything like that. We just had a good time. I mean, it was just fun. It was friends. We just hung out. Place to, it was a place to let loose a little bit. There was yeah. no, you know, the coaches let you do your thing. There was no outside noise, so to speak. Yeah. Coach Randy, I, I, I can only remember taping one person to the bench, but other than that, I'm, I think I'm okay. And we're going to get to that story in just a minute. But Coach Hicks says, to "Tell you hello." Oh, hi, Coach. 
Mark, I can remember you just triggered a memory in, in my mind. Do you remember the classroom that sat adjacent and directly behind the library? That little bitty yes, classroom. Yes, that little bitty classroom. I think I took Spanish in that classroom. That's what I was just going to say. I was in ninth grade Spanish. I was in the back of the room. Yep. And that classroom, the doors on either side in the front of the room used to be a pass through if you wanted to go down yep. the science hall. Yep. I remember Darren Chatham and a couple of others came through. And this is where I told you I had memorized some of the, the <laughs> most of the names. Darren wore number 12 at the time. That's yep. the number I wanted the next ah. year. So he comes through and he says, sup, Nomberg. And I'm like, I'd never heard sup. I'm like, what does that mean? What does that mean? So I just said, sup, Darren. Like I knew what I was doing. And yeah. all my buddies are sitting behind me and they're patting me on the back and they're like, man, you know him. I was like, no, I just know who he is. And I know yeah. I need to say something. But I was like, <laughs> but I, that's, that's one of those ninth grade moments. Yeah. Just like, oh, we got to make sure yeah. that we, we don't mess that up. <laughs> yeah, I, I took ninth grade Spanish there. Happy to get my C, and I got the heck out of Dodge, and that was the last bit of uh, foreign language I ever took. <laughs> I, I had Mr. Grigsby a couple of different years, and oh, they were horrible for me. Yeah. <laughs> could not, could not, could not, could not deal with it. Yeah. All right, let's go back on the field. Yeah. Ninth grade year with Coach Kirkland, Coach Tria. That's, that's never an easy year down in the bowl, but it is such a, a coming together year for the team mm -hmm. of the future. Right. And I want to say, wasn't your class, you were a year ahead of Woo Woo and Doug right. uh, Jones and that crew that was the 84, that's Leo, that's that whole crew, Blake Hall and all those guys. Right. But who were some of your ninth grade teammates that later, maybe Pi Whaley, I'm, I'm not, I'm just trying to think of who. Yeah, they were, they were, he was a year ahead. Um, that, that whole Leon and Pi and all of them were, were a year ahead. Um, Ahmed Fitch, Kevin Chris, um, Charles Bronson, um, gosh, uh, Dickie and uh, Scott Lambert. And I mean, I could go, I, I, I'm, my, my, my old brain's a little foggy. I need to get out my list. I've, I've, got, I've got it here in the, um, I got out my old scrapbooks of everything. So I, I trying, to, trying to bring my, my brain up uh, to speed, so. Treasure trove right there, treasure yeah. trove. But it is, if, if you recall, and just tell me if, if, if you don't, did you have any sense through that ninth grade year? I realize it's a year of transition. It's a year of survival. You're trying to figure out academics. You're trying to figure out a social life where you fit in from that standpoint. I'm going to get back yeah. to that in just a second. But from a ninth grade year, by the end of that year, did you guys feel like you were a pretty decent team or had the potential for a good team? Yeah, I do think so. I mean, we we won uh, a, a number of games. I believe we beat Dothan High in um, our ninth grade year. But I think we realized and we looked around and our group was pretty good. Um, you know, it was – we weren't great some games in there, but uh, we came together and, and you, you looked around and you go, okay, these guys compete hard. Um, you know, we can, we can do okay as we move up. And, and when we moved into um, 10th grade, a fair number of people got some shots to play that, that 10th grade year. Um, they, what would that been the third year? The, I think the, the third team. Um, so, over from the, by that year had, had transitioned out. And so some of the guys got to play. I didn't get to play a whole lot. Um, at, at that point, I was really little to be a center. But, um, but yeah, there was quite a few few guys that got some playing time that, that first year. In, well, Mark, in who grade. were your, your 10th grade year? You're, you're getting up to the JV now. Who was the varsity yeah. center? Who was ahead of you? Who were you having to – uh, follow and, and try to compete with for some um uh Stephen McDuffie Slim was a year ahead of me um mm -hmm. and I can't remember who was a year ahead of him but but that that was um that was who really helped me along and got me to that point and um I think he played most of the time that my sophomore year and then we sort of split time my junior year um, and then my senior year, I split time with Blake Benj um, a good bit. 
Yeah, we had, I, I want to just go back for those of you who don't remember, Northview's first season was the fall of, of the season of 78. And Coach Parrish had the team going because they were six and four the first year out. The next year, Mark's sophomore year, they were nine and two and had an outstanding season. Then, Mark, your sophomore year, the varsity was seven and three. And then, of course, your junior year is the state championship year. And before right. we get to that, I want to talk about a little bit about school spirit. I want to talk a little bit about what was what was life like in ninth and tenth grade before that magical season of a brand new high school? I mean, it's literally the paint still drying. Yeah. But I've always heard how awesome the the school spirit was at that time. Oh, it was it was great. I mean, I. I even tonight as I was getting ready for this, my wife said, I think you enjoyed high school a whole lot more than I did. And, and it, it's true. I mean, I, it was, it was so much fun. I remember in ninth grade, you know, you weren't on the football team yet, but I can remember going in and helping build floats for homecoming mm -hmm. and hanging out with people and, and just being a part of the class at that point, so to speak. And, and you went to ball games and you hung out together as ninth graders and, of course, you know, the, the football players would try to, oh, I'm going to be down there next year and I'm going to be playing that. But, you know, at that time, the locker room was, I mean, it, the lockers were wide open. So you saw people all day, every day, and you could hang out till half second before the bell rang and make a mad dash down the hall, you know, depending on how far you, your class was down the hall. So I, I really think that that helped build school spirit tremendously. And the fact that, you know, in, in Dothan, we were still a little bit the underdogs in the sense that, you know, we had all come together and sort of been pooled together. Uh, we hadn't all come up together. We had some at, at Honeysuckle, some at Girard. Other people had transferred in um, from various places. Uh, there were people that had transferred in from Houston Academy that had been at Houston Academy. And all of a sudden, you get the opportunity for a public school and larger athletics. And we had people transfer in um, to do that. So it, it was a much, everybody was, it wasn't a tight group that had started in first grade and had gone all the way together. So there was this learning each other, but, but you know, sort of coming together. So it was a fun time. Do you have, uh, I, I've never asked this question. This is really going to test your memory. Do you oh, remember gosh. some of the, either the movies or the songs that were popular at that time? And do you hear them now and it take you back to some time during that, because it does. For oh me. yeah, I mean, it, it, it. Well, it takes me back to to dances after football games. I mean, that's that's the the connection. And um, uh, recently, I found some old records, and I mean, just there was there was one uh, Sashik and and uh, you know dance tunes and Earth Wind and Fire records, and oh, I hear songs, and I'm like, oh man, that was Doug Q Center on Friday night. I mean, that that was it, you know. Um, so yeah, fun times. And and I, I assume by now your girls have heard these stories so many times. Not only they quit rolling their eyes, they actually tell the stories better than you. They do can tell that. Yeah, they can pretty much tell the stories, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> That's so great, guys. I'm talking with Mark Kingry. We're in the it's 79, 80, 81 time period. And Mark, did you continue playing baseball throughout high school? Nope, nope. Um, like I say, I couldn't hit a curveball, and I quickly realized that I was not going to be much help with the baseball team. So um, I, I, I played football and, and did other things. And, and during the off seasons, let's talk about workouts. Let's talk about uh, lifting weights or running or whatever was expected of you guys back then. I know that over the years, Northview built up its weight training facility in the in the different rooms. But what did you guys have by way of weightlifting and weight training back then? Um, you know, it it was just pretty much dead weights, um, and just the the weightlifting area, and there was probably what twelve of them maybe around that room upstairs um, in the gym. On the front, I guess that would be on the the, the northeast corner uh, was the weight room up there. And I don't know if I've shared this before, but in going through everything, I found, and I'll put this in the group, I found letters from Coach Parrish 
that were sent out. One was July the 20th of 1981, and one was June the 26th of 1981, talking about what the goals were, how often the, um, the weight room was going to be open, what his expectations were, um, that we had to buy spirit packs with travel shirts, jersey socks, shorts, and they're going to be $30. <laughs> so, uh, Mark, that was in 81. By 84, they had risen to $35. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, please. Oh, I'd love to see that stuff. That's that well, is priceless. As a matter of fact, speaking of the 81 season, he wrote this. The better your physical condition, the easier it will be to get in shape and stay in shape. Results, and then underline, the closer Legion Field becomes. Mm -hmm. He was a prophet. Yeah. Now, <laughs> what did you do in the off season? Let's say that, let's, let's take it to the summer leading up to the yeah. upcoming seasons. What things did you do, if anything, during the summer to prepare for the fall? Um. I generally would go to the school and work out midday. Um, I, I usually would, um, I mowed grass for a living, so to speak, and I mowed around the, the neighborhood. I had a little trailer that my, my dad repoed from a rental place that didn't didn't pay him a bill. Um, and so I could put our my mower on a trailer and so I, I mowed grass. But my workouts consisted of going generally at about 10 o'clock uh, in the morning and then trying my best to learn how to or to, to run enough to make the mile cut off and which was just absolutely brutal for a slow person like me so that, that was I, i'd probably go three three days a week at least um that kind of thing did you have uh, did you meet any of the guys particular or just y'all just showed up i think we just sort of out? showed up i don't i don't remember specific people that came at times but there would always be somebody in and around the locker i mean it, the weight room for sure and i remember those i can't remember the weight pounds that were on the shirts was it like the 200 pound club yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah the two, 200 250 or whatever I, I i never got many of those i don't believe <laughs> <laughs> but I, what I do suspect that you did achieve were the Ironman awards of not missing. I suspect you were in the yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't miss much. Matter of fact, I found an old Ironman trophy. I think my senior year was Super Ironman, so I didn't miss a single practice. Then you had other ones where you missed a few practices or whatnot. So yeah, that was that was the only thing I could hang my hat on for sure. Well, let's let's take it now to the summer before your junior year. Northview had gone. Uh, let's see, seven and three, your sophomore right. year. They've been nine and two the year before. A loaded senior class, a yep. very experienced junior class, and a dynamic sophomore class was coming in. But did anybody, I know everybody had the same goal. Legion Field, the state game is always the goal. Yeah. But you guys arguably put together the finest season in the 41 years in Northview's history, 13 and one. The only blemish was Sidney Lanier, but that defense just was such a dominant defense. And during the year, much like my 85 team, you guys had a major injury in the middle of the season yeah. that just kept on clicking. But before we get to the actual season, I want to, if you recall, the expectations that spring going into that summer. Can you take yourself back to any of that time period and what it was like for that period? Well, I mean, as you well know, Coach Parrish, the expectation was always excellence. I mean, that's that was going to be the expectation. And I do think that we had a sense that um, we had we had something special. Uh, we had a, we had a ton of team speed. I mean, there were some fast people on that team, and uh, David Alford, and 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 I mean, we just woo woo, and and of course we had the power from Doug Jones, and but our defensive backfield was so good, um, and and we had big linemen, and then of course, hey, there's Larry Roberts. Just if in doubt, just let oh, Larry. Oh yeah, I forgot go. about two other contributors, uh, Larry Roberts and. Yep. Who was that other guy, Brent something? Brent, Brent Gilbert, yeah, yeah. They're two guys that, that did fairly well playing college ball, you know. Um, and so, um, you know, we we just moved 
through and, and the expectations. And I think we all rode off of the expectations for Larry. I mean, you know, he was top recruit in the state or one of them, you know. And so there was always this sense that we've got something that most of these other teams don't have. And so we built that offense around that. Um, and everybody worked out through the summer and we were ready to roll come football season. If you look at the roster, the 10th through 12th grade roster for that year, I think you're going to find somewhere in the neighborhood of north of 25 guys ended up yeah. playing somewhere in the collegiate ranks. Yeah, Pretty that, that, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, it, it was it was a strong group of, of guys. Now, let, let's talk about your goals, you personally. You're mm -hmm. coming in as a junior. You're, you're on the line at center. Who are you competing with? What were your ex? Did you have any specific goals and those kind of things? Well, I wanted to. I just wanted to play, and um, and I, I hate for Steve McDuffie, but but Slim hurt his ankle or something, and actually missed the first game. So I got to start, and I got to play the entire first game, um, and it and that really helped me sort of solidify a spot to where I was ro uh, on the rotational basis. But, you know, it's funny, I watched those clips that you put of the um, state championship game recently uh, on the side, and, and I loved seeing that because I had not seen, I don't believe, any of those before or many of those. But I'm not sure I played the state championship game. Even my brain tells me that. I wasn't in a single clip. So, obviously, <laughs> I, no, I, I know I played, and we swapped series almost every series throughout the, the entire year. But my goals were – to participate, to play, um, and to be as good as I possibly could be. I didn't have any huge expectations. I just, you know, I was a, I was a junior, and uh, I just wanted to be a part of the team. Well, what was it like snapping for senior David Alford, one yeah. of the, the most dynamic athletes to come through that class? Well, and they, like I say, David and I had known each other for years. We played together on the Bombers um, back in, uh, I guess, probably his eighth grade year, my seventh grade year, whatnot. He lived a street over from me. We played a lot of baseball together and growing up. And um, matter of fact, uh, recently, a year or two ago, my uh, daughter went down and saw him for some, some foot issues. And, and he began to tell them how comfortable he was and how familiar he was with my backside. Um, and so, <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. well, and, often, and just so yeah. you know, David's coming on the show in a few weeks, so we'll we'll get him to cooperate that. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but no, it was it was good. Um, you know, it, it, it was fun snapping the ball like that. Although I I will tell a story on Coach Parrish and on myself probably. But you know, one time I snapped the ball and I I can't remember whether it was Dickie or whether it was um uh David. But it was at practice, and I snapped the ball on the wrong count. And, uh, you know, it, 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 at the time, we didn't run the shotgun. It, it was hands under butt and, and pretty much, you know, bent a finger or something. And I was going to ask you, were there two pops? One was yeah. the snap and one was the finger? Well, one was the finger, yeah. yeah. And um, so, needless to say, Coach sort of lit into me a, a good bit, and, and, um, and he was – pretty regular up in my face and and he was very familiar with my helmet and face mask and how to grab it and how to spew me with um tobacco juice and and everything else as he politely told me how I could better myself um but he um he then called a very rare play which would be a shotgun snap and we all got down on the line and then so while I was fully exposed coach introduced his foot to my backside um, and to remind me that I didn't need to do that again. And then we went on and ran the rest of the play and I was good. <laughs> and, and what did he, what, what was the, the famous quote that coach always used to say about backsides? Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that one. Um, yeah. That, that um, backside, everybody's got uh, what everybody's got a, uh, one of those on the backside. Yeah. Excuses are like buttholes. Excuses, yeah, one. there you go. Excuses are like yeah. buttholes. Everybody's now, got one. And we heard now, that one. Joseph Johnson, JJ just joined us and I bet he's, I hope he's chuckling at some of these stories. Yeah. And JJ, I want to get you on here uh, sometime soon. Guys, I'm talking with Mark Kingry. We're headed into the fall of 81, the state championship season. 
you guys mainly ran the ball. I mean, it was very few passing. As you pointed out, there was about 70 passes the whole year. The whole year. And the defense really, really was so, so outstanding that whole year. I don't want to ever say that the offense wasn't, but I want to point out a couple of things. First game of the year, Mark, you guys took care of Carroll 28 to six. That was the first game you got to play because of Slim's injury. The next game, you took care of Prattville, 21-14. Then was the Sydney Lanier game. Does any of these games, you have any vivid uh, memories? You played at Northview to start the season, but that you went to Prattville and then to Sydney Lanier. And Sydney Lanier just seemed to be the thorn in Northview's side every oh, yeah. year. Well, we were up 14 nothing, 17 uh, nothing, I think, on yeah. them. And, yep. and we just, I mean, we just imploded. Um, I, I was looking through stats earlier, and, and we imploded primarily. Uh, I was telling you earlier, I, I did not realize in the course of that year, we fumbled the ball 36 times and mm -hmm. lost 22 of those. So we threw 72 passes, and we put the ball on the ground half as many times as we threw passes the entire year. Um, and in that Lanier game, um, we we lost, we fumbled twice, lost one, and we threw two interceptions. So, so yeah, that that came back to bite us. Uh, well, the Prattville game, mm -hmm. the Prattville game was was exciting because we did. Um, they were they were really good, uh, and and really were probably expected to do as well or better than we were that year. Um, it was really us and Enterprise that that uh, and and Prattville from from the South that were sort of expected to do well, and the the uh, the Prattville game was really a, a, a an exciting end. It was an exciting game. Uh, I do remember that. Well, it's it's the 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 week. I wish I'm glad I wasn't there for practice, and I suspect you still have some PTSD would have been after that Sydney Lanier game leading up to the Crisp County game, because it, I think one, I think that's the game that David got hurt, but yep. two, you guys ended up taking care of business at Crisp oh, yeah. County, beat them 35. Well, and, and that could have very well been, of course, it may have been in two days as well, but it could also very well have been uh, one of my PTSD moments. And, and I laugh about that. The only time that I just remember falling out, uh, on the football field because we were pushing the blocking sled and pushing the blocking sled and pushing the blocking sled. And I mean, it, it, it was hot and we didn't get water back then. You didn't get a break. And, and I just remember somewhere off in the distance, I saw somebody that was getting some water that had had a problem or fallen out already. And next thing I knew, my head was on the ground. And I'd pat, I mean, bam, I was out. I just saw that water. And so, um, you know, we, we got pushed really hard uh, because I think coach knew how good we could be. And even though, even though David went down because of the type of offense we ran, I'm not going to say everything was plug and play, but it didn't rely on one person to carry the entire load. Yeah. Um, and so while quarterback is extremely important, Dickie ran the option unbelievably well, but it did allow for, and the same reason I was able to play center, the, the wishbone, you have to play as a team. And so everybody does little things to achieve the results rather than one person or two people doing great things. And so it, it masks some of those things, particularly on the offensive side of the ball, uh, where we had smaller players and, and zone blocking. And, you know, I could just aim at a, at a knee and, um, you know, stay as low as I could and, and be as, um, as ornery as I could and, and be as much of a pain in the butt as I could for any linebackers that I could scrape off of. And I didn't have to deal with too many nose men right on top of me uh, that was just that I had to one-on-one -on -one block. Well, I was going to say, when you, when you have a, a, a triple option type offense, it's hard for a defense to have a nose guard one-on-one -on -one because they'll yep. never be able to defend it. But it, it was that Crisp County game that really put DJ Doug Jones on the map. He scored three touchdowns that game. Yeah. That's not what people really remember from that, that particular game. Do you remember when David got hurt in that game? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, it was right before halftime. Um, you know, it was just, it was a shock. I mean, we, I'd grown up with Dickie and knew him. We all felt confident in that. But, I mean, David up to that point was our leading rusher. 
Um, I was reading some stuff earlier today, and he, I mean, he already, that was the, what, that was the fourth game of the season, something like that. But as quarterback, he already had almost 300 yards rushing that year. Um, and he was just tearing it up. And, and you just knew that any, any pit or any time he didn't pitch the ball, he could also be in the end zone. Uh, he was just that fast. Um, so it, 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 it shocked us. I think it was really good, though, that we got to go into halftime almost immediately after it happened. Um, and get our wits back to us just a little bit because it took the wind out of us. I mean, we were not expecting that for sure. Well, well one of the, the memorable things is, is how admirable and how successful Dickie was as the season went on. Oh, yeah. For a sophomore to step up like that in such a junior, senior laden team that was really starting to, to get a role to step into, it's one thing to step into a short passing game or an eye formation, but the option is <laughs> there's so much with the timing. Yep. And I know that there, as you said, there was a bunch of fumbles during the season, but for Dickie to be able to do that was just so admirable oh, yeah. with him. I mean, more than admirable, it was really quite astonishing. Oh yeah. Well, the well and, and, and looking at that, I don't think most of them were, were triple option fumbles. I just think we, we, we just put the ball on the ground. And, and I mean, people hit hard. I mean, we were playing some big boy teams. It wasn't, you know, people forget that 4A was the top of the, the line back then. You know, we were 4A state champions, but that was it. And, Mark, it, it's – I hate to say this, but Kendrick was always a welcome sight on most schedules. <laughs> the, the, next, <laughs> the next two weeks, you guys really – you put it to, to Kendrick 31 nothing, Pine Forest 24-7. Carver Montgomery was a, a seven point win, but then you, then the defense really stepped oh, yeah. up, got into, I mean, they limited Selma to three points, Enterprise to six. Yeah. And that Enterprise 80, the next season, they really took it out on us. And I, I know that's oh, probably yeah. some bad memories your senior year. <laughs> yeah. But that's a huge win, 17 to, uh, 17 to six over Enterprise. And then we get to the Dothan game. Yeah. 10 to three, that's a win. That is, I, I, one thing that, that I, one of the things I always wanted to do was go to the state championship game in 81, but I was an eighth grader. I went to several of the home games at Rip Hughes, both and I being one of those games. Now tell us any that you remember, because that's your buddies over there. Now you're playing, now they're, oh, yeah. they could be directly across the line from you. I don't know who they were, but what do you recall about that Dothan High game? Well, I just, I remember, I, and I, Pretty sure this was the year they started off pretty highly ranked um, with us. I mean, we were we were both similarly ranked to start the year, and we went one direction and they went the other. Uh, I think they finished the season at one and nine that year. Um, but when we came down to the end of the year, that was their Super Bowl. You know, that was all that they had left. And so I do remember, um, you know, Spanky Thomas and. Um, Oh, running back. Um, you had him on recently, I think. Um, oh, uh, Dennis, Dennis Tillman. Yeah, and uh, I'm drawing another blank on another guy. But, you know, they had athletes. They just did not put it together for that year. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think we were as nervous as anything because we had it locked up in terms of we were going to the playoffs by that point. We, we, we'd done well enough in the region and, and whatnot, but you don't want to lose to your rival. You know, so um, to put together that game, and and I think we still had um, we turned the ball over some, but uh, again, the defense really saved us at the end of the day. Uh, yeah. And you know, when you can score ten points and win a ball game because the other team scores zero, um, mm-hmm. it, it it makes life more fun. <laughs> ten nothing at half, and no nobody scored in the third, and then Lee Ray Marshall kicked a field goal with three minutes to go, so made it 10-3. Yeah. So the defense really was just super stout. Once right. Again. But now we're heading into the playoffs, and, and the expectations just keep building. and just keep building. Keep building. And you guys took care of Murphy. Then yep. you took care of Foley, both of those games at home. Then you went to Jeff Davis, which many have called to be the greatest Northview game. It, it Yeah. That yeah, was, it, it, it was it, that was phenomenal to me. That was the state championship, and I think that that affected our state championship game 
tremendously. We weren't, I wouldn't say we weren't prepared. We were prepared, but emotionally to come off of that game, uh, to win with 20 something seconds left or, or whatever, 30, 32 seconds left, I think, and they missed the field goal to tie it. Uh, Crampton Bowl, Friday night, cold, it was in, in November. Um, it, I think it was the Friday night after Thanksgiving. Uh, we'd given up our Thanksgiving to practice and to do all of that stuff. And and then to come to Montgomery and, and to be there and, and, you know, it was rocking and rolling and, and JD was the team during that period of time. And they Montgomery. had a future, future superstar quarterback who ended up at Troy State, oh, yeah. Mark, Mike yep. Turk. Mike he Turk, was a phenomenal player. Yeah, and Curtis Stewart was the running back. Um, he was he was fabulous. Went on to play at Auburn, and and you know, big big boys. Yeah, some big time. But then you guys ended up in the state title game. Now I want to talk about that Tuesday practice. Yeah, <laughs> how I remember it for ours so vividly. Yeah, what do you recall about driving up on the Greyhounds on Tuesday to yeah. go to Lucian Field? Well, you know, I'd been to the Legion Field to Alabama Auburn games for a number of years. Um, when when my dad could get tickets, we would go. And um, I remember walking out, you know, and, and looking up from the from the field. But the, what I also remember is I'd never stepped on AstroTurf before. You know, I didn't know what artificial turf was. Um, and that was the original stuff. As a matter of fact, I've got a little piece of it uh, here in my – in my book because they were replacing it right after that. Um, and so we all, after the game, a bunch of us over there on the side, we're tearing up AstroTurf and getting a little clippings. Um, but it, it, I just remember how slick it was and how hard it was. And, you know, we all took like four different sets of shoes and nobody had AstroTurf shoes, you know, and, and we had these weird looking cleat things that um, we had uh, that I ended, up, I ended up wearing these things. I wouldn't ever have worn them to play football in. They weren't soccer cleats, but they weren't football cleats. Uh, it was just, the, it was the weirdest thing. Um, and so you're there. And I, if I'm not mistaken, it may have even rained on us that Tuesday. I believe that it did. So that made it even more odd. We we're trying to get some practice in, but um, then we get on the bus. Then you got to go, you know, drive back to Dothan. And then you got to practice some more. Then you got to get back on the bus and you got to leave and, and everybody's expectations all through the week are just building that, hey, y'all are going to be state champions. Y'all are going to be state champions. And somehow you got to focus on, okay, we got to go play a football game. I was going to say, did you do any academics? I don't remember doing academics. That <laughs> I don't week. I don't remember any. Yeah, I, I doubt it. What? Um, where did you guys stay? What hotel, if you recall, when you came mm. to North? Uh, came you to know, I, 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 don't, I don't even remember that. I, 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 remember, I remember a hotel. Um, and I remember them, I remember the coaches checking up on us and making sure everybody's locked in the rooms and all that kind of good stuff at night. But I, I, I sure have no idea where it is. I, I don't know if it's the same one we stayed in, but and there is a Holiday Inn at the exit at the airport in Birmingham. And that's where we stayed. Okay. Now you'd never stay there. <laughs> but Mark, I also remember when we were here in, in Birmingham for our game in 85, we went out to Hoover. They had a small movie theater. We saw Rocky Four. Oh, was wow. The, that was How the cool. Friday. Nice. Yeah. yeah. But That's neat. let's take it to the game. Yeah. Let's take it to the day of. Well, well it, it, was, it, was so, it was sort of surreal. I mean, we'd never played an afternoon. It, was, it felt like practice, to be perfectly honest, in some sense, because uh, we were, there was probably 20,000 people there. It's the most people we'd ever played in front of. And you look up in the stands and and you could go, hello, 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 hello. You know, I mean, you see the decks and there's nobody and there's, you know, you, you feel sort of isolated. It's 1.30 in the afternoon on a Saturday. Um, it, it, it was this, it was really strange. You go out there and you play and, and while people were screaming and yelling, the intensity level was so much less than it was the Friday night before. And, and it was hard really to focus and to get motivated. I mean, we were doing what we needed to be do, doing, but we also were playing and nothing against Carver of Birmingham, but we had never heard of Carver of Birmingham before, before that week. Uh, and, you know, we'd always come to Montgomery and played Carver. Well, Carver of Birmingham, who are they? You know, we're Northview. And so I, I do think sense of 
we're going to win the state championship because the South is supposed to be better than the North this year and Carver beat Huntsville and Huntsville was supposed to be really good. And, you know, we, we should just slide up here and we should take care of business. And that's not exactly how it went down. We, we that was a, a really close game. I, I went back and reread all the clippings and, and I didn't realize and, and, and watching those vi the videos that you posted, I really had forgotten how close it was just because once it's over with you are state champions and you just feel that way and you sort of block out the a lot of the individual stuff the little things that happen it's just yeah we're it i was going to say but for a missed extra point and then a long pass that wasn't completed yeah that game could have gone a, a whole different a whole different way now a whole different way the one thing the, the one play that i do wish that we could have hit was that um uh, fake field goal. Uh, Coach Hicks drew up that thing, and and we practiced that. And and uh, Larry had his shoe over there, and he realized nobody was going over there to cover him. And I, I mean, I would have so loved to have seen that. That would have gone down the annals of high school football, you know, kind of thing. We'd lob that ball over there to him, and he'd have taken off. And and it, but wasn't to be. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't. You can set me straight on this. Was it Joseph or you or Blake who had the snap of all snaps that we had to get that punt out of the back of the end zone? That was that was that was Joseph. Hey, um, thankfully my my junior year, I did not have that job. Um, yeah, so uh, he did that, and uh, I commend him for that because the following year. Mm -hmm. I scored Carver's first two points by snapping the ball from about the 30-yard line out of the back of the end zone in Crampton Bowl. So, in hindsight, I'm very glad that he was there taking that snap, and that was not me because I might have airmailed that sucker just like I did in uh, Crampton Bowl. <laughs> well, let's let's finish up with the the the, or let's finish talking this part portion, and we've got just a few more minutes. Yeah. About the state championship game, the final buzzer goes off. The game is over. We are state champs. Were you on the field when it physically, when the game ended? Were you on the sidelines? Do you remember? Um, I was on the sidelines because it, it ended, I, I, I believe it ended on a deep, or maybe we, maybe we held them and we had to go back out for one more snap um, to, to take a knee um, to actually be on the, but and if that's the case, I believe that's the case. Um, I think Slim went on the field for that since he was a senior. And um, if I'm not, I think we had alternated back and forth. And I was like, no, get out there. You know, y'all go. So it, we were on the sidelines and and it all finished. And and again, it was just sort of surreal. You were running, uh, running to each other and you're, you're hugging on each other. And then, of course, you turn around and you're trying to find all your friends and your family. And we're all moving, and bands playing. So, you know, it, it was an exciting time. I, I will never forget those moments, just, just wanting to hang around and just look and take it all in. Because, you know, okay, the, the odds of it, obviously I was a junior, and you have that expectation always, hey, we're going to come back here, you know, we're going to do this again, right. we're going to be great. Right. But you also have to stop and go, okay, this was pretty amazing. It, it was amazing, 13 and 1 the number one team in the hardest division of, in the, the state, 4A at the time. It didn't turn 6A for a couple of years yep. later. But back then, the south, southern half of the state was, was getting the best of the northern half of the state when it came yep. to state title games. Oh, yeah. Enterprise won it, I think, the next year. Uh -huh. And there were just other years all. Yeah, they had, won it, they had won it a few years before. Uh, we won it. J.D. had won it a couple of times in the, you know, in the, the early 80s and late 70s. Um, you know, it, it, it was definitely the expectation when we went was that we should win the game. And, and there was a lot of pressure there. And taking, I want to step away from your junior year, and I don't mean to skip over your senior year, but I always love to talk about life lessons and yeah. things we learn from sports and how they translate to, to life. And as you said, Mark, you finish that game and everybody on that team who was coming back is of the mindset, we're going to repeat, we're coming back. 
but that wasn't the reality. The reality was the team didn't make it to the state finals your your senior year. <laughs> but we didn't even, we didn't even make it to the state playoffs. <laughs> well, I was going to say there, but it, it doesn't it, it doesn't necessarily define that it wasn't a successful season. I know that the 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 excellence is reaching the state finals and winning it. Yeah. But like anything with with sports, I always say that sports are the last of reality TV, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you can't, you don't script it. You never know what's going to happen. But there's so many great lessons from teams and, and being a teammate. And I know you've utilized that throughout your life. And so I guess my question to you is, up to now, up to your, your junior year, you've alternated, you've gotten a lot of playing time, you've seen good, you've seen bad. But what did you take from your experiences playing high school sports that translated into real life afterwards? Uh, I mean, I mean, I hate to say everything in the sense that um, when I was in eighth, ninth grade, I didn't have a whole lot of confidence in things. I my weight, although 170 pounds is center, but I I I just I didn't feel good about what I was able to do. Um, I didn't I didn't I wasn't confident in doing that and. You know, Coach Parrish just pushed us to the point and, and I think cared for us enough, loved us enough to make us believe that we could do things that we could have never done otherwise. And, and you learn to rely on other people. You learn to rely on your teammates. Um, you know, just like we were talking about earlier, uh, wishbone blocking scheme. You know, I had a backside double on almost everybody. I was supposed to cut – cut the nose off and then I, I was supposed to move to the next level, but I got to give off in my backside guard and the guards go pick it up. And, and, you know, those were things you realized you had to rely on the people around you and, and coach Paris just believed that we could do it. Now he believed it very vocally at times. Uh, and, and he would, he would push you to that. But I mean, you, for me, it carried over into, I knew that I wanted to do orthodontics and, and to, to straighten teeth from early age. My cousin was an orthodontist, Dan Helms and Dothan for years. And, and I, it, it took things that I didn't know I had in me to put myself in a position to get accepted and to do things and to be a, a, a available um, coach just gave us that, that will to do things. You know, he, he would, he would just encourage you and, and, and he would get on you, but then he would believe in you and he would tell you that you can and you can do this, um, even to the point where, uh, and, and I, hadn't, I don't know that I've ever told him this, uh, but um, several years ago, I did a full Ironman. And in the darkest of the darkest times in the middle of the marathon of trying to finish that blasted Ironman and riding bike and everything else, I actually thought about Coach Parrish <laughs> <laughs> driving that dang blocking sled when I didn't like to get where I needed to go. Um, and, and he cared enough in us to push us to that point. So yeah, I've taken high school sports and, and the camaraderie with my friends and the teammates and what the coaches did and how they set us up for success. Um, you know, I, I think about it almost every day if not every week, you know, it, it it's a huge part of what, of my life. It's, it's just, it's incredible what those memories, how they can come back to you in certain parts of your life. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. adulthood. I bet when someone says around the horn, you still kind of shudder a little <laughs> bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, when the, when the running backs and quarterbacks had to go through the section of around the horn that the linemen did. Yeah. Somehow I just, I wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's funny how you you back up. I mean, uh, Brent Gilbert, I put, sent you the Brent Gilbert broke my nose. It wasn't around the horn, but man, he, we were going one on one one day, and he popped me right. And, I mean, I'm, I wake up, and I'm on the ground, and my nose is bleeding. And I mean, he he broke my nose uh, the state championship year in 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 eighty one, uh, mm -hmm. and we had a, we had a good laugh. We saw us at each other at Auburn game last year, and he he had a he had a good laugh at my expense that what he had what he'd done. 35, 40 years later, all he's got to do is give you one yeah. of these from a distance. You're like, ugh, ugh. Yeah, as uh, Coach Hicks said, he hit me with his flipper. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, well, Mark, we've got just a couple more minutes, and I appreciate your time and taking us through these incredibly awesome 
stories and memories that you've got. I want to talk about your senior year because your senior yep. year didn't wasn't up to the same as your junior year. But frankly, it would have been very hard pressed with all of those awesome seniors, Brent, Leon, Pi. I could go on and on and oh, on. Yeah. Larry, those all those guys, they had to leave. They had to graduate. They had to go on yep. and play at the next level. But you guys still had, again, that was, uh, let's see, that would have been in the fall of 82, my freshman year, your senior year. So you had the likes of DJ. Uh, you had uh, – Woo woo, you still had uh, Dickie, you still had such a great core, at least on offense, coming oh, back. Yeah. You, had, you had Bruce Johnson on defense, you had so many outstanding defensive players, but it wasn't quite the core from the year before, right? And so, do, do what are some senior year memories other than giving Carver of Montgomery a couple of points? Uh, that first game. <laughs> well, unfortunately, they're they're mostly bad. I, I just, you know, the the worst memory was was getting beat by America's that first game. I mean, it was just brutal. I mean, we came off that state championship year, and you know, we had lost all those good players, and and on defense, um, you know, Bud Young was gone, and Scott Patterson was gone, and Joseph Johnson was gone, and uh, the whole defensive backfield almost. And 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 you're right, we had good players. We just never played together. Darren Chatham had to come down and play linebacker. He and David Fields were our linebackers, and and you know on offense we had we had lost Slim McDuffie, and we'd lost part of the offensive line, and and so it, it, it we walked into that first game, and they came in and just absolutely annihilated us. I mean, we were down twenty almost immediately. We lost the game thirty six to nothing. Um, you know, but I think that the us rising out up after that i mean that was that was a shocking wake up call um and then to to go on a run where we you know won the next uh gosh one two three four five six six games in a row yeah, yeah we won, won it enterprise. six games in a row and then we went to enterprise um i remember coach Parrish. There's a, I couldn't find it in my uh, clippings, but I, I remember Coach Parrish making the comment to somebody during the week, a, a reporter, something to the fact the last time we went to Enterprise, we were down 20, 20 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. I hope we're not down 21 to nothing. And at the end of the first quarter, I looked up at the scoreboard and it said 21 to nothing. I said, we need to go get on the bus. <laughs> we need to go home. <laughs> I, I remember being at that game in Enterprise, that that bowl, the, the bacon yep. bowl, such an intimidating place. They had a huge team. I want to say maybe it was his name. Was it Carlos Robinson? Mm -hmm. I yep. Remember. Yep. I think it was yep. 44. He yep. was such an amazing athlete. He either went on to Auburn or Florida. I can't remember where he played in college. I think he played at Florida. Um, Alan, Alan Evans had been there the year before, um, and, um, and Carlos Robbins took over, uh, and he just absolutely ran all over us. Uh, I mean, it was, it was ugly, 44 to nothing. And then they had Cedric Smith a couple of years after that who ended up playing at Florida as well. So they had a series yeah. of – some serious talent running back, but you're right in those six games in between the two whitewashes, uh, it was a six game win streak right in mm -hmm. there. But then, then there was <laughs> the loss to, to enterprise and then, and then we lost to Dothan high. I mean, yeah. oh, that, that was just horrible. You know, it, they, we had beat them the year before and it had been their um, sort of super bowl. And, and then we come back uh, our senior year and, and we just could not get anything going. I mean, we couldn't score. And it, it was just it that that was devastating, really. Um, and it it in a sense it set the tone probably for what you ended up doing in, along the way, because it was at that game uh, and then going into the Ozark game the next week where we realized we had a chance. But we pretty much in one week ditched the wishbone mm -hmm. and began running more of a spread offense we we passed the ball more in that game than we had passed the entire year um we had more passing yards we came out and i mean we were throwing the ball all over the place 
turns out going back and looking at it, it was more, we were just balanced offense. <laughs> we still ran the ball a lot, but yeah. comparatively, we felt like we were throwing the ball all over the place. And Dickie ended up with, I, I want to say 180 yards of passing or something, which for us was just phenomenal. You I was going to say that may have equaled his season <laughs> up to that. Up to that well, and we won. And, and then, I mean, we beat him 20 to eight. We just annihilated him. And so we come back to the, to the, to the stadium or to the, um, uh, locker room and we're all sitting around waiting for some game to finish and us to get the report right. and I, I mean that was just that was the weirdest thing it, you it finally came across the radio that so and so had run and we weren't going to go and you know we just all sort of looked around at each other and went okay well that's that's the end of our football career well that's um, what I was getting ready to ask you 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 win the game your final see final game you didn't know it was your final game you yeah end your your organized sports as a win. But yep. then you have a dip in emotion because you don't make the next you don't make playoffs. And then does reality then set in, man, we just I just finished my my sports career. Yeah. That was it. You know, I guess I'll clean my locker out next week and gosh, I don't have to go to workouts next week and hmm, I don't have to show up for six periods or whatever. You know, I mean, you, you, you begin to adjust real quickly when you when you see the yeah. good on the side. But but that night, I do remember sort of, uh, you know, Charles Brunson and and Scott Hill, uh, Scott Lambert, and and you know, we were all just sitting around, and it's sort of like, okay, that that was it. I, I guess we go home tonight. You know. Um, it, it was an away game, so there wasn't a dance to go to. There was not anywhere to go hang out, really. People had, were just coming back home, and so it that, it just sort of ended. And that was that was a strange feeling. I was going to say, I bet that Monday was just like, all right, what what do I do? Where, what yeah. do I do? <laughs> what do we do? Six period. I guess we go get our stuff and turn it in. You know, that's that was the end. So, well, but that that wasn't the end for for what your aspirations were, of course. No. You go on to, to college and, and, and then on to, to medical school, et cetera. And I don't know if there's really a, a, a place to, to, to stop our conversation other than I know I wanted to, I know you, you have the love of sports. I know you have the love for many other endeavors and things in your life, including raising three children and now about to be a granddad, which will be super awesome. I only get a boy after three girls, I, a boy grandchild. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, but Mark, let's, I want to, I guess here's where I want to conclude is, is talking about teammates. Yeah. Talking about friendships, at least with my group. If I don't see them for periods of time, you get together, somebody can just say one thing. Brent Gilbert could do, give you a flipper motion. <laughs> Something yep. that either immediately strikes a smile on your face or takes you back to somebody's backyard or mm -hmm. to the arcade at, at the mall or something. <laughs> Who are some of your buddies you've been able to, to stay friends with all these years? And, and you guys don't have to even talk for long periods, but you just pick back up. Um, well, I mentioned him over several times and uh, I've seen Scott Lambert and, and uh, Charles Bronson and, and Ahmed Fitch. And, you know, I mean, those are guys, Kevin Chris, the same way, Blake Binge, um, just uh, um, lost track of a bunch of folks. Uh, thankfully, we've got a good group that still comes back to our reunions. Um, and so we get to see each other on a regular basis. Um, but I have lost track of a bunch of those guys. And thankfully through this, you, you've interviewed some of them and I've gotten to connect with a few people and on Facebook and, and those kinds of things. So that's, that's been cool because it has made some connections for me that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Although I will have to admit, sometimes I'll see somebody and I'm like, now, where did I know them from? Oh, they were on that football team. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> um, I, I don't know if you're looking forward to the next a reunion but you guys are fast approaching number 40 yes we are yeah it's, it's, it's not it's not far off that's right wild i don't have room yeah. to talk i'm not too far behind you but it, <laughs> it's crazy how the time how the time flies and how our time has flown tonight so Mark, yeah it has i, I truly truly want to thank you for such an awesome conversation 
You're welcome. I enjoyed it and uh, I look forward to watching us continue this and, and seeing more and more people uh, get this opportunity because it's, it's fun to visit. It's fun to, to think about these things. It was fun to dig out all these old clippings and I'll try to get, like you said, get pictures to you and I've got the uh, everything from the, from the state championship year. It's funny, by the time I made it to my senior year, I didn't go back and do all of those things. I've just got a stack of stuff. So I'll, I'll see what we can do so that people can go back and read and, and look at, um, you know, the game, the game history and uh, those that might be interested. So pretty fun stuff. Well, thank you. That, that video of the highlights from the state championship year, of course, were provided from Miss C who throws out nothing. And yeah. the first two weeks, I think, or three weeks since I posted that between YouTube and this channel and some other places, it's been seen like 900 times. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, guys. I, probably most of us just going back and rewatching it over and over and over and trying to relive our glory days. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's such a glorious day in everybody's childhood. That That's right. It's just a special day. But, guys, I, I just another awesome conversations with Cougars telling the oral history of our sports football program. Dr. Mark Kingry out of Montgomery, number 54 on that 81 state championship team. So thank you, Mark. You're thank welcome. You thank all you. These awesome comments and just keep coming back. We'll get back on the normal schedule of next Tuesday and uh, you guys continue to be safe. Have a good weekend. Y'all be well. Take care. Take care.